be comparing some fractions. So, if we want to know which fraction is bigger and which fraction is smaller, we're going to have to compare them. But first, uh, oh, not again. I lost my smart board pen. Einstein? He tried to make himself look non-complacent. Einstein, we all know it was you. So, okay, so today we're comparing fractions. So, what we want to do when we compare fractions is this. We have two fractions with, let's first try two fractions with the same denominator. Well, this is pretty easy. The one with the bigger numerator is greater. Just like how 3 is less than 6, 3 over 7 is going to be less than 6 over 7. But now, we're going to do this with different denominators. No, no, no. Sorry. Okay. So, now, let's try this with 3 over 4 and, say, 7 over uh, 10. Now, which one do you think is larger? The one with the larger numerator? No! It's not the one with the larger numerator. 3 over 4 is actually bigger. You can express this as a decimal. 3 over 4 is slightly bigger than 7 over 10. So, how can we trust ourselves to make comparisons for fractions with different denominators? Well, we can make their denominators the same. Now, there are two uh, there's one more, uh, more way to do this, but it's okay if you ca uh, can't get it. I'm going to cover that one other way just at the end of the video for all the smarty kids. So, two, two ways. So, first of all, you can just do it by multiplying them. So, what we want to do here is we want to get the least common denominator. Why? Because if we have their, uh, if they have common denominators, then they're easy to compare, as we saw over here. So, how do we get our least common denominator? Two ways. Well, first, we have just multiplying the two. Now, this doesn't work on everything. For example, for say, 5 and 7... It works that gives you 35 but for something like 4 and 10 which we had before that doesn't work so it gives you 40 but their real least common multiple or least common denominator is 20 both of them can divide into 20 now another way that prevents this problem but can be mind-numbingly tedious is just writing out all their multiples. So here we can do for example a 4, 8, 12, 16, 20 and we want to find their least common multiple so they're uh, the smallest uh, multiple that they have in common and we can write little columns for this. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5. Meaning this is 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3, 4 times 4, 4 times 5, etc., etc. Okay, 10, 20, oh yeah, 40, 50. And right away, you can probably see that we've got a match. But the process isn't always that easy. Now, I don't have enough time to show the boring, I mean, uh, the boring side of this process on the board. But if you want to, you can check that out on the works. I spent so long typing that out. Please check it out. So, so now, let's use those two ways to try and find the common denominator between 6 over 7, between 6 over 7 and 
uh, let's say, 5 over 8. Let's try comparing these two numbers. Alright. So, first, we're going to have to find their least common denominator. Now, we can do this the easy way, which is just multiplying them. 7 times 8 is 56. And turns out, this works conveniently in our favor because... 56 is the least common multiple of 7 and 8. So now what we can do is we can multiply 6 over 7 by the trick we learned when we started learning about fractions. We can simply multiply this by 8 over 8 because 8 over 8 is simply equal to 1 and 1 has no effect on multiplication. Meanwhile, we can do the same thing for 5 over 8, multiplying it by 7 over 7. 6 times 8 is 48, sorry, 7 times 8 is 56, 5 times 7 is 35, and 8 times 7 is 56, sorry. Now they have common denominators, and now we can very really easy, very easily compare them to each other, because since 48 is greater than 35, 48 over 56 is greater than 35 over 56. Or in other words, 6 over 7 is greater than 5 over 8. Alright, so that's it for today.